This is the third section of chapter seven, algebraic methods, and this is on the factor theorem. So what is the factor theorem? What does it state? Well, the factor theorem states this. If f of p equals zero, then x minus p is a factor. So what's that actually means? It means if you get zero when you substitute a number, we'll call it p, into a polynomial. So you put this number into a polynomial and you get an, an answer of zero then a factor of that polynomial is x minus p. Now we can state the whole thing backwards, that basically if x minus p is a factor, then we know that f of p equals zero. Now we can show that x minus p is a factor either by using the factor theorem, here using it this way around, which is probably quicker, or we can use long division, that will take slightly longer to do. And if we use long division, then we're expecting a remainder of zero. So unless a question states um, explicitly to use either the factor theorem or long division, then probably the factor theorem is going to be the quicker way to show that this is a factor of a polynomial. Example five show that x minus two is a factor of x cubed plus x squared minus four x minus four by a algebraic division and b factor theorem. Now, normally in uh, an exam or test situation, you would choose one way or the other. You wouldn't be asked to do both. So our divisor is x minus two. We've got x cubed plus x squared minus four x minus four We've got all our powers, descending powers of x, so we don't need to put anything else in. OK, so x times by what is x cubed? x squared. Let's write that here. x squared times by x. x squared times by negative 2. Underline. Subtract. That's going to leave us with, and let's write this correctly here, it's x cubed. Um, x squared, basically plus 2x squared, so that'll give us 3x squared. Bring down the 4x. How many times does x go into 3x squared? Well, it's going to be 3x. Multiply the 3x by the divisor. So we'll get 3x squared minus 6x. Underline, subtract. That will leave us with negative 4x, basically plus 6x, which is 2x. Bring down the negative 4. Then we say, how many times does x go into 2x? That's just 2. x times by 2 is 2x. Multiply the 2 by the divisor. So we'll get 2x minus 4. Subtract. Now, since they're the same, we're going to get 0 remainder. So we can say that since the remainder is 0, remainder is 0, hence x minus 2 is a factor of x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. Okay, part B, using the factor theorem. Now we're going to see this is much quicker. So um, we'll say if x minus p or x minus 2 is a factor, then that value of p is equal to 2. Now be careful, it's not minus 2. Remember the factor theorem says that if x minus p is a factor, then f of p equals 0. So it's always a negative here. So for example, if this was x plus 2, this would be negative 2 here. So be careful, p is not negative 2, p is 2, because this is the factor theorem. There's a negative there already. And all we need to do is to substitute 2 into this, where we've got x. So we work out f of 2. And f of 2 is going to be 2 cubed plus 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 4. 2 cubed is 8. 2 squared is 4. Then we're going to be taking away 8, taking away 4. And I can see that's 0 because I've got 8 minus 8, 4 minus 4, 0. So, so we can say that since f of 2 equals 0, therefore 
x minus 2 is a factor of x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. So you can see which way is quicker. So if you're not told which way to do it, I would always go for the factor theorem. That's going to be quicker than long division. Example 6, fully factorise this polynomial here. Now notice that in this part of the question, no factors have been given. Now the unusual in an exam that no factors have been given and we would need to sort of guess what those factors are. Now normally um, the factors um, or the values of P are going to be things like maybe uh, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. And we try F of these numbers or put those numbers into here and which one and see which ones give us a value of 0. Then we can work out the factors. Now there's an, a quicker way of doing it and that's by using our calculator. Now in our calculator, we're going to go to table mode on our calculator and use a table to help us quickly find any factors. So to get into table mode, we want to go press the menu button and then line for table and then f of x will come up like this on the screen. And we're going to type in this. Now for the x's, there's an x button underneath the on button and we just type this in so we'll, and we don't even need to do multiply so we'll just do two then the x button so that's the one underneath on then the cubed button you'll need to do shift and x squared to get that then plus then the x button underneath the on button then the x squared button then minus 18 then the x button minus 9 like that so we just type that in then we're going to press equals once we've typed it in once you've done that, the calculator is then going to ask you for a second function, g of x. We don't want to type in a second function, so just press the equals button straight away. That's a bit like uh, our enter button on a calculator. And then it's going to come up on the screen, table range. Now, uh, it says start and end and step. Now, um, I suppose we could start from negative 2, go up to 2, but we're going to pick a larger range of values. Let's maybe go from um, negative 5 to 5. Hopefully we should find a value in that range and we'll type in a step of 1. So we'll type those in and then press equals. And then you're going to get um, a table, two columns of values. And what we're looking for we're looking to find zero in the f of x column. So the table is going to look something like this, obviously with straight lines. And it's wherever we see zeros. Now, I actually see a zero next to an x value of negative three. And it looks like I've hit the jackpot because if I scroll down, I also see another x value or, um, of three to give me a value of f of x. Okay, so what does this tell me? Basically, these are like my values of p. So when p is negative three, or when p is three, I'm getting f of p equals zero. So all of this has been done on my calculator. I've not had to sort of try and fill around and find the factors that way. So I can say that since um, f of negative 3 equals 0, and I suppose really I should say that we're going to let f of x equal 2x cubed plus x squared minus 18x minus 9, because this f of x has just has suddenly appeared, so we need to state. So since f of negative 3 equals 0, that means that x plus 3 is a factor, is a factor, so not x minus 3, it's always x minus whatever p is, so it's x minus negative 3, x minus negative 3 is like x plus 3, and since 
f of 3 equals 0. Again, we got that from the table. That means that x minus 3 is a factor. Now, that's not all the factors, because if you multiply those together, you're not going to get out this 2x cubed plus x squared minus 18x minus 9. We need to find the other factor. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to multiply together our two factors. And we can just use a difference of two squares. And that's going to give us this quadratic. If I divide this polynomial by this quadratic, the quotient, the bit at the top of the long division, is going to be the other factor, assuming that I get a division of 0. So I've put together these two factors. I'm basically saying x squared minus 9 times by what gives me this. And I'm going to use long division to do that. So let's uh, write that out. Actually, let's do it a little bit lower. So there we go. And we just follow through our long division algorithm. OK, so x squared times by what is going to give me 2x cubed. It's going to be 2x. So we write that over here, over the x's. Multiply the 2x by the divisor. So we're going to get 2x cubed minus 18x. Right, OK, I was going to write it here. I need to write it in the right place. It's going to go here. So minus 18x. So this is like putting 0x squared here, or I could just leave it blank. But we keep everything lined up. Now we subtract. So first column is going to be 0 here. This is just going to be x squared, isn't it? x squared minus nothing. So x squared. And then negative 18x minus negative 18x is 0. So we'll just put 0x. And then we bring down the next term, which is the minus 9. Then we say, right, OK, how many times does x squared go into x squared? Well, it's just once plus 1. Multiply 1 by the divisor. So you get x squared minus 9. Keep everything lined up. And I can see that when I subtract, I will get a remainder of 0. So I can say by that that this is a factor. So hence, 2x plus 1 is the other factor. So to fully factorize this 2x cubed plus x squared minus 18x minus 9, it means that we can write it in three brackets. One is x plus 3. One is x minus 3. Then the other bracket is going to be 2x plus 1. So now this is fully factorized. So we'll move on to part B. We need to create a bit of space because part B is asking us now to sketch the graph. Now, once we've got the factors, we just need to work out what type of shape the graph is going to be. And I can see it's going to be a cubic and it's going to be a cubic that sort of goes up from top to bottom or from left to right because we have um, a positive x cubed, so it's going to be sort of this type of shape, like this. It's going to cross the axis at the points negative 3, 3, and for here, I think this is going to be negative a half, and this equals 0. So let's start our sketch. So we'll just write down when f of x is 0. So it will be when this is negative 3 when this is positive 3, and when 2x plus 1 equals 0, which is the same as 2x equals uh, negative 1, which is the same as x equals negative a half. So these are going to be the points where it crosses the axis. So let's put uh, 3. Let's put negative 3. And let's put negative a half. So this is not to scale. But gives us some idea. Now, it's not going to bounce anywhere because there are no squares. So it's going to go up through there, down through there, and then back up through there. So let's draw that in. So up through there, down through here, and then back up through the three. Now, I can see it crosses the y-axis at this point here. It's always good practice to work these out. So at this point here, this is where x equals 0 
Now, if I put zero into this, all I'm left with is minus nine. So I can see very quickly that this point, the value of y, is going to be negative nine. Example seven, given that x plus one is a factor of this, find a value of a. Now, we could do this either by uh, long division or by using the factor theorem. It's going to be so much easier using the factor theorem. So the first thing we're going to do is to say let f of x equal 4x to the power 4 minus 3x squared plus a. And then we're going to use the factor theorem and we can say this. If x plus 1, which it is, is a factor, therefore f of, what would it be, negative 1, equals zero what does that mean that means that if i put negative one into this it's going to be equal to zero so let's do that so four times by negative one to the power four minus three times by negative one squared plus a equals zero now you can see the only unknown there is a so we should be able to work this out and find out what it is so negative one to the power four is just one so we've got four Negative 1 squared is just 1, so minus 3 plus a equals 0. Now that's nice and easy. So that gives us 1 plus a equals 0, which means that a equals negative 1. So you should now be able to do exercise 7c on pages 145 to 146.